Bitcoin boo laws exploding over themselves in terms that we haven't seen since 2021. And there are very important things to be aware of today. Uh, some setups as well. And of course, just things that we um, quite literally haven't seen since, you know, the last most bullish cycle and some more information that does essentially coincide with the likelihood that the overall four year cycle that Bitcoin has been experiencing over the past, I think, 13, 14 years is very likely breaking. Um, so other than that, I want to welcome you back to the Eric Crown Crypto channel. In this case, we can just go right on over here to the chart view. I want to follow up on this signal. This one was, was posted in real time on Twitter and on their Discord as well for Meta Signals. The reason why I keep on shilling this damn project is because one, I'm an investor and an advisor in it. So full disclosure there. But two, it feels like it's going to be one of those things where, you know, right now it's like people are starting to pick up on it. But I feel like uh, when people actually pick up on it and, and realize what it is, it's going to be a little bit too late. Uh, not only did it hit all three targets, obviously it's like at target 10 right now as bitcoin heads up uh, above fifty-seven thousand bucks anyways moving on now i do want to get into bitcoin's daily statistics we do see that on tuesday it is the most likely to be bullish day for bitcoin and so far bitcoin living up to uh, living up to those statistics <laughs> yet again we can see that out of all tuesdays in bitcoin's history 60 almost 60 and a half percent of them have closed positively for an average return of just over two percent for reference, as of right now, from the open to current price, Bitcoin is up about three and a quarter percent. If it were to come back down closer to the average, which I don't necessarily know if I'd count on, that would put Bitcoin closer to like 55,700 or so. Um, of course, there are negative returns there as well, but I think uh, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say this is probably going to be a positive closing day. I don't know, though. You never know in Bitcoin land, right? Anyways, um, also, I want to bring up this as well down here. We do see that on the up and down statistics that um, on average, when Bitcoin likes to print, print consecutive green days, the run up right here, the average is actually two days in a row. But the thing is, is that when you go all the way up to four green closures in a row, that brings you to the 84th percentile, which is an outlier by definition or starting to get into outlier uh, territory by definition. And today would be the fourth um, green day in a row. Why am I bringing this up or what can you kind of deduce from that? Like, when do you expect out of the ordinary results during important breakouts. And I believe that's what we're seeing right now yet again. Um, so, you know, in, in, uh, in, a, in a video a few days ago, I did say that March was likely to be boring. And I, I mean, statistically speaking, March is likely to be boring, but that doesn't change the long-term view in that Bitcoin is more likely to head on to the upside than the downside. What the hell is Elsa can't figure out uh, door locks? <laughs> Just try turning it to the left, maybe. I don't know if you guys can do that in the background. Um, but uh, but yeah, anyways, moving on now, I do want to get in the old bing and bong. Um, this, was, this was a chart that we looked at yesterday and it was staring me right in front of my face and I, I, it's like it's almost as if I didn't even look at it. Um, but the weekly time frame did close above the median way back on over here in February. There's Senor Bing and Mr. Bong way high up here at 57,500, and that is the high of the day thus far. So short term, does Bitcoin for, uh, find a little bit of a pullback from this region? I think that question's already answered as Bitcoin does back off more than $1,000 from that pivot. But um, with the positioning of the HPDRO especially, while volatility is once again increasing off of you know what were extreme lows, you know, this one probably does has have more to go over the next few weeks. So that does um, that does make me question what I was uh, considering before with March being a likely a boring month. I mean, Bitcoin could theoretically actually trade to the upside in March and then still close, you know, relatively unchanged. But um, this rally is unlikely to be done. Uh, and that will be fully confirmed, by the way, if we do see a closure over this 50% level. And at that point, almost always, almost always, you see a quick move to the 618 level here, which is actually, <laughs> it's actually at 62,700. Um, or sorry, the chart that I was referencing yesterday was a daily and the daily did close above the, uh, the meeting as well. And as you can see, it's already at the 50% level. And <laughs> I mean, 618 level is 50, basically just below 58,000 bucks. That's the one that we we're looking at yesterday, but all of these charts kind of, you know, work um, with each other. And, uh, and as you can see, you know, upside in the coming weeks, probably most likely the next major thing to be, um, to be cognizant of though, would be 57,400 on a weekly closing basis for Bitcoin that will propel things into uh, the 60, uh, basically somewhere around 63,000 bucks. Um, doesn't mean that Bitcoin can't go more from there, but you know, if, if we see that before March, I'd probably be looking at something like this, where Bitcoin plays in between this region 
um, you know, maybe for for the majority of March, maybe even April as well into the halving, and then actually tries this move to the upside um, from there. And at that point, you're probably looking at a retest of all-time highs and, and all that good stuff. So again, you know, Bitcoin um, compared to all prior cycles is higher than it's ever been ever, uh, or sorry, closer to its prior all-time high ever than it has ever been um, pre-halving. So this... I do think is a pretty compelling um, piece of evidence that the four year cycle is breaking and over and that models based upon that are going to be just, they're going to be noise. Um, so I think it's, it's going to be important to start to make that, that switch cognitively now um, as, uh, as the market is letting us know things are different. Things quite literally are different. Um, you know, the famous last words are this time is different, right? But I don't know how that implies to like the rest of it. I'm not making any implications for that. It's just the four year cycle as we know it. I don't think, I, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's relevant anymore. Um, we have, we have evidence that something new is going on. What is a new thing? We don't know yet. It's, it's, it's all new. So the only models that I'm really going to be trusting from here are statistics models uh, based off of volatility and, uh, and momentum as well. Um, statistics based off of like prior cycles and whatnot, I, I don't think they're going to work. I don't think that they're going to work. Um, you know, I, I, got, uh, I got that information earlier, obviously, with this month of February because February, you know, traditionally would have been uh, a sideways and downside month. We didn't get that. We didn't get that at all, really. It was, in fact, uh, a very girthy green dildo month to the upside. So fair enough. Anyways, um, moving on here, I do want to get into now the monthly time frame. So we've, we've looked at the daily, we've looked at the weekly, now the monthly, and the monthly is where things get really fucking crazy. Um, because the monthly, which has literally about two and a half days left to go before February is over forever until next year, <laughs> um, is going to have a chance to close above the median on the, on the, on, on, on the HP to bands. Not only that, this is where things get even more fucking crazy. The HP to is now in positive territory and the HP to V is coming off of extreme lows. Let's put that in perspective. Um, when was the last time we, that we saw this, uh, this sort of thing? Well, one of them would be right here in October 2020. Sorry, this one's not relevant. Um, do we have another one over here? Uh, no, H. Peter was not on the same side right there, uh, nor was it right there. Um, but it was right here. Yes, indeed it was. So we have another one right there. Uh, this was, you know, uh, preceding the 2017 historical run. Um, all both of these didn't just trade to the top side of the of the blue 50% of histor of historical returns range highs, but it also uh, tagged the 61.8 level as well. So where are those respectively? The 50% level is. <laughs> I can't believe I'm gonna fucking say it. I'm gonna fucking say it. It's 96,700. The 618 level is 123,600. Uh, but here's the thing, you know, these levels will change. But they, they will go up, actually, is what they're going to do, um, you know, as the months go on. So, yeah, not bad, not bad. Anyways, um, cool. Okay, I do want to make a quick announcement as well because we're still a little bit earlier on in this video. Oh, yeah, one last thing as well. Uh, monthly RSI is back in the bullish control zone for the first time since 2020. Um, again, these were the, the, the prior times that we've seen these reads happen, as you can see on the green vertical bars. <laughs> massive run, massive run, massive run. I don't know. <laughs> this time's different. Uh, <laughs> It's fucking wild, man. It's fucking wild. Uh, but good to see. Definitely good to see. So, uh, you know, if you're bullish, of course. Um, so, yeah, my point is that long-term direction, you know, still very much set here. We're seeing uh, all of the higher-term time frames starting to align. Again, doesn't mean that you're going to see ebbs and flows in lower-term time frames. And, of course, you always have to have invalidations for things, um, which is unfortunately something that does not get heard enough on YouTube, although... Uh, I try to speak about it, but sometimes you read the comments and you're just like, I don't know if you got that one, sir. <laughs> Maybe I didn't do a good job of explaining, but I don't know if you got that one. Um, but basically, uh, this is not even helpful at this point, by the way, but anything above February's low is is just noise. 
I mean, shit, anything, anything above like 48.5 is, uh, is noise. Um, upside is, uh, is a direction long term. And there will be pullbacks along the way and probably violent ones at that. But, um, you know, this, this looks like it has more. Cool. Um, okay, one last thing. Let's get into something new. So what you're going to see in the coming days, probably 1st of March, around there is that the jewel light is going to change it's going to change in its name and slightly in its function or it's not necessarily going to change in its function but it's going to be it's going to have added functionality it's going to be re renamed the crown vmp that's going to be volatility momentum uh, percentile and what i'm going to be uh, and what i added to it or what i had added to it because i'm not a i'm not a um, developer um, but, uh, but what, what, what we had added to it was a percentile function and then also a filter as well. Um, you can still use the original functionality here, of course, uh, if you want, you can just put on this part in the background, of course. Um, but, uh, but ultimately this is, uh, this is going to be the next evolution of it. So I do want to let you know that if you have the jewel light, it'll be automatically changed for you. So don't freak out. If you see a different name there, it's the same indicator. It's just, it's added functionality. I'll, I'll put up, um, additional videos on how to use it. I'm working on strategies in the background, as you can see right here. And I'm quite happy with this one, <laughs> with this one as it is. It's a five minute strategy back tested over the past four, four years and two months. Um, and, uh, and I mean, I, well, I like it. <laughs> so then there's that. Um, so, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, of course, if you're in the crown quant automation, um, you will also get uh, free access to this indicator as well. Um, just as you had access to the jewel light, uh, bundle before it'll just be renamed. That's it. More functionality. That's all. Um, you won't have to do anything to receive it. You'll just, well, I mean, you'll have to like delete it from your chart and then re add it obviously. But, um, but other than that, it'll be, it'll be as it was. And, um, yeah, I just want to make sure that, uh, if you have these things, you understand like not to freak out when you see something new there. And, uh, and also you will get this, like, it's not, it's, it, it'll just arrive to you. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to do anything. Um, so yeah. Uh, oh, also, I should let you know that we're going to be moving everything back to Teachable. In fact, if you look in the description below, um, all of the uh, all of the programs have already been moved back to Teachable. So that's going to be the new venue for things. That's where all the updates will be. Um, if you had access to things on CrownTrading.net, that's completely fine. You can you can continue to view it there. That's 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 all good. It's going to continue to be there, but. If you want the new information, then um, then what you'll need to do is you'll need to message Elsa dot Crown Trading at Outlook dot net uh, dot net. Yeah, Elsa dot Crown Trading at Outlook dot net. In fact, I'll just type it out right here. Okay, Elsa dot dot Derp at Herp <laughs> at Outlook dot net, and she will add you. Um, uh, but of course, you know, give her some time to do that because it's probably going to be like a shit ton of people. So fair enough. All right. I think that's a good place for me to be leaving off on this particular video. As always, I want to wish you the best of the best. Um, again, this video more or less focused on the long term. We didn't really speak about anything in the short term here. If I was going to speak about the short term, I'd really just be looking at the daily right now. Um, and I'd say that the next major area of interest on the daily is uh, to the upside around 57,900 to the downside, kind of where we're at right now. Um, if Bitcoin does close above about 56,400 today, then I'd be looking for uh, a test somewhere just under 58, um, you know, in the next day or two. So not bad right there. And of course, invalidation on, on this sort of um, this sort of a thing would be, you know, anywhere below 55,000 bucks on a closing basis. Probably going to see a move back down towards the medium. But, the, you know, the breakout looks real real to me. We see higher term time frames, not just the uh, weekly and monthly, but the, also the daily expanding off of lows for volatility. So I would say that that uh, likely does be get more continuation, or at least first and foremost, it's going to be the more likely thing to happen. All right, cool. I'll end things right there. As always, I want to wish you the best of best. Take care. Much love. See you hopefully tomorrow.